Welcome to the Sailing to Success podcast, the show created exclusively for entrepreneurs and small business owners looking for a safe port in the storm of fast-paced business growth. Lindsay Phillips is the founder of Smooth Sailing Online Support, a company dedicated to helping entrepreneurs and small business owners increase customer service, run their business more effectively, and increase their profits. Prepare to be inspired and learn some practical tips and strategies you can use in your business today. And now, welcome your host and captain for this 30-minute excursion, Lindsay Phillips. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Sailing to Success podcast. This show was created exclusively for entrepreneurs and small business owners looking for a safe port in the storm. So my name is Lindsay Phillips, and I'm your host and captain for this 30-minute excursion. And um, as you know, I love to motivate and inspire my audience and really share some practical tips and business building strategies to help you grow your business. So today, Today I have on Aaron Orendorf and I'm so excited. He's with IconicContent.com and we're going to be talking about copywriting, content marketing, and how to get on those amazing sites like Huffington Post and be a contributor. So stay tuned because I'm looking forward to this myself. So let me tell you a little bit about Aaron. As I was mentioning, he is a contributor at Huffington Post, Life Hacker, Entrepreneur, Fast Company, The Next Web, Content Marketing Institute. I mean, I can go on and on for a while, but it's super impressive list. So he is an independent content strategist and copywriter, and he partners with both emerging and established clients to produce professional commercial copy that's really clear, compelling, and consumer specific um, and I love that he is saving the world from bad content aha uh -huh. awesome so thank you for coming on the show Aaron I'm so glad to be here that was quite an introduction thank you so much I was about <laughs> to say do go on but I suppose you don't want to bore anybody with my own self-centered yeah we'll, we'll, we'll drop that <laughs> Awesome. Um, yeah, I, you have a few good uh, lines that I've found um, s that you're saving the world from bad content because it is out there. Um, but I love how you say that, like, why bad content costs you money. I mean, we're all, most entrepreneurs and online entrepreneurs nowadays are into content marketing, know what that means. Um, so why don't you tell me a little bit, maybe we should backtrack a bit and talk about where content fits into the puzzle and how bad content costs you money. Where content fits into the puzzle is, and there's not necessarily anything new about this kind of approach, although content marketing is one of those skyrocketing Google trend terms that has mm -hmm. just blown up over the last you know 10 years or so. But it's really just a matter of giving your, your leads, your soon-to-be customers value up front in the form of solving problems and doing it for free. That's the approach of content marketing. So everything from a podcast to an email sequence to blogging, which is probably the most common application of it, yeah. to creating an ebook, a checklist, even having something engaging on Facebook, uh, from just fun to, yes, actually saving somebody from something. All of that is content marketing because you're, you're trying to preload the relationship with value in advance of the pitch the product, the offer, the sale. That's what content marketing really comes down to. Perfect. And I know it, it's, you know, there is bad copy out there on a landing page. Blogs, I guess, I don't know if it matters as much with blogs. You'll probably correct me. Um, but like yeah. email, emails, sales pages, you know, with social media even. I mean, if, if some people just like, why can't I write it myself? What's the difference? Yeah. There, now, honestly, and I probably shouldn't say this out loud, there's no reason you can't. That, that's the honest truth. But there's, there's methods into and a lot of behind the scenes that takes place that makes something from content to copywriting. So content being the kind of stuff we just talked about, the blog posts, the email sequences, the white papers, that kind of stuff, the adding value pre versus copywriting, which is far more marketing focused. The real bad content, so that the content that I try to save people from, <laughs> is businesses almost inevitably end up writing about themselves. Yeah. And so it's supposed to be content, it's supposed to be a 
up, you know, that specific angle. I'm going to add value. I'm going to save you from something. I'm going to deliver you unto something. They just end up having these sort of self-referential, heavy-handed, where that second element of copywriting and marketing should be super strong. It bleeds in to the content, and it becomes this sad, truncated version that everybody can see through. And whether or not you're actually paying to try to drive traffic to that through something like you know PPC advertising, AdWords, Facebook, whatever it is, or you're simply burning over whatever goodwill you've generated to your email list by sending them that junk, that's where the cost comes in. And the cost, it can be very deceptive because the cost is oftentimes simply, if all you're doing is running a blog, the cost is the time you put into it, your own effort in creation, the burnout that inevitably comes from not seeing results on there, thinking it doesn't work and missing out on what does. And yeah, it, it'll just, it'll chew you up if you try to do content without getting that, put the customer first, put the prospect first into it. And that is so hard to do as an insider. That's the biggest help okay. I ever am to a company is when I come in from the outside, I'm like, I'm not going to write anything for you for a week or two. We're just going to get to know each other and I'm not going to create anything. That's when I'm going to be most valuable to you because I'm going to be a fresh outsider with all those chops behind me that can then back up the what do we do next. That is so true. And even um, from my perspective, I get material from my clients or like solo emails that they've written and I have to edit or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but what's in it for them? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm like, but where's the part where they care? Like the benefit, you know, I need to sign up because... So yeah, I always have to, I was like, um, but what about this? And I try to edit it nicely, but it's so true. It's so easy to do. Yeah. I like to, so I've got my little tagline, saving the world from bad content. And the way that I frame it with new clients and the way that I talk about this at conferences, the way I talk about it when I'm given a sort of behind the scenes look at what I actually create Mm -hmm. is I try to put it in theological terms. I, Every piece of content should save some real human being from a hell they're currently experiencing and deliver them unto some heaven that, that they genuinely want. That has to happen first. And then you can follow up with, oh, and by the way, I sell something. Yeah. And that, those two things have to be divorced. And the thing of putting it in those sort of deep existential terms is it wakes clients up to the reality that their content is not doing that. Yeah. I'm not saving anybody from anything. I'm sure that's a huge wake up call for some of them. Yeah, it's, it's a shocking sort of way to put it, and that helps incredibly. And it helps us to then really dig into, you start mining what those hells are in your audience's life, and that just everything you write from the content side to the copywriting to the landing pages to the marketing collateral you create, and you're speaking their language. And you really have to know who your customer is and what makes them tick, what are their pain points. Like, you really have yeah. to dissect that and understand it. Yeah, there is good writing, good content, good marketing. Uh, The last 5% is creative. The first 95% is you listening and doing competitive research and digging into places like review sites, Mm. uh, Amazon, your competitors own reviews, Yelp. So the internet is just a wash in this amazing resource of what people are complaining about. Oh, no. Sounds like a weird way to put it. No, it's but you, you want to that. talk their language, yeah. right? Yes. And so, like, I've just wrapped up a few landing pages, and honestly, it's two to three weeks of research of really unsexy Google spreadsheets of what are the <laughs> ads that are out there, what are the landing pages that are out there. I'm just dumping in actual customer reviews and wow. feedbacks and ratings. And I just do this. That's all I'm doing for the first 95% of it. And then writing the thing is gravy. It's, uh, it's just coming right out of them. Yeah. And no I've never heard of anyone doing, I mean, I don't know what goes on behind the stage of, you know, behind the scenes for copywriters, but um, I've, I've never heard that approach of doing all that research and all that stuff for a landing page. I like that. Oh yeah. That's, that's the deal. That's what leads to conversions. And of course you don't have to be that intense about it when it comes to blog posts. Right. But once you figure out what those pains are, 
that informs your entire strategy basically moving forward. If you can nail that, that hell that they're experiencing, yeah. you get a clear picture of that and you, you are off and running and it's not creative. <laughs> the last thing you should no, do totally. is, try to, yeah, is try to create stuff, you know, brainstorming session with your own team and by yourself and giant lists of, no, nah, let, let, let your audience just tell you what they want and give yeah. it to them. That's so true. And that's what interests me about the whole copywriting end of it. It's like, there's so much a sales tactics and strategies, but also the psychology behind it all. I mean, even copywriting and subject lines, like what gets people to click, you know what I mean? I just find it so fascinating. Well, and that's kind of the thing too, where it's not creative, right? It's, um, I just finished this fantastic book called The Advertising Solution, where uh, Craig Simpson and Brian Kurtz, and Brian Kurtz is just this old school direct male marketer who's built up a number of businesses. He's just, uh, he doesn't have a big name necessarily in the online world, but he's a beast. And all this book was, was six of the copywriting legends from the early 1900s. They're, they're all Ed White guys at this point. And they're all saying the exact same thing in these formulas for the headlines that have worked in the past. And here's what works about them. It's not an exercise in creativity. You figure out what's worked, these formulas, these hacks, and they're out there available online for you to grab. And that's the kind of stuff that unlocks what feels like a secret because it isn't. I know. It's crazy to me. It is really interesting. Um, so what do you love doing the most? Like, do you love like creative writing? Do you love sales pages, promo emails? Like what's your, like it gets you fired up and you love it. I, I love writing articles. I mean, the kind of stuff that sort of gets people in the wide end of my funnel, you know, mm-hmm. places like Huffington Post you mentioned yeah. or Entrepreneur Inc. Uh, or even like the, the copy bloggers, the Content Marketing Institute. That stuff is fun because that's straight up content. And sometimes yeah. it's just content for the sake of, I'm going to entertain you for five minutes, which is, which is great. There's no reason. I mean, tell me a good story, that kind of thing. Yeah. Or I'm going to add this value of a how-to to it. And the freedom that comes in writing those, and especially when I get to write for my own blog, then it's just me and my voice. That's, there's a great freedom and a love that comes in doing that. But honestly, I've had such a fun time developing this research process recently for the kind of landing pages, really honing that. Yeah. And then, the, again, the freedom that comes, I'm not trying to figure anything out by the time I put finger to keyboard. I know what, what's hurting these people. And it's, it's like, it's, it has, it's, it unlocks that process that once felt very mysterious to me That's of true. what makes something sell. Yeah. So the material ends up jumping off the spreadsheet for you, basically. You're jumping off that, that sexy Google spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> That's, and you know what? Most people would hate that research techie technical part of things. That's funny that you're the opposite. Yeah, and, and the, you know, the research isn't insanely fun, but when the insights start coming and yeah. then you get to that end of the process and you realize the alleviation of your own pain That's in writing, like that, the hell for a writer is feeling like you have to be creative, feeling like you have to reinvent the wheel, just reaching out into the air and depending on that muse and being able to short circuit that whole process, it, it feels incredible. That's good. And you must be good at it. (laughs) So when it comes to the average entrepreneur out there that, you know, they have their website, they have offers and landing pages. um, Where do you think some people, you know, they're on a budget or they're just, you know, it is an investment to to have the content and all that material written for you. And and a lot of my clients Mm -hmm. do it and and have copywriters and such, which is awesome. Um, But like, where do you think an entrepreneur should start? Someone writing the content for their website or a sales page or promo emails? Is is there one that's more important than another? Oh, you mean like what do they create first or invest themselves in first? Yeah, like if they were investing in a copywriter and having them write all this material versus them doing it themselves. Oh, yes. So my, my order is always the same. 
when I'm working with new clients, we've got to either number one, create a long form homepage that has everything in a long scrollable screen. Yeah. Uh, and so they've got that where a customer lands there for the first time, uh, or we're going to create a really short version of that and a very focused landing page on the one need that we identify to start filling up their email funnel. That's the idea. If you're online, Perfect. uh, Everything you do should be about getting that email address. True. And there's some simple, yeah, there's some simple ways to, to augment that on your website with plugins. I've written about this before, especially my last article for Content Marketing Institute walked through, I think, like 18 or 19 just different collection types. But that's, the, I'm really like focused on everything we do is to get somebody to respond to give us their email address. Yeah. So then we have this repository to draw on and sell to and, and help. Absolutely. The other thing I would say is the other thing I'd say is less is more. So if you're trying to create an ongoing content strategy, it is far better to write one fantastic, helpful article a month or even every other month and let your other publishing be spotty, be, you know, spur of the moment, something that interests you so that on top of this one really great, amazing post that you invest yourself in every month or every other month, you're putting something up every couple of weeks, right? So you want to lower the expectations for yourself because like I said, it, it'll burn you out so fast oh, yeah. to try to create an actual, yeah, <laughs> an ongoing content. I'm in the middle of writing a blog calendar. right now already. <laughs> Uh, it's just, it's, and you you stare down the barrel of those like yeah. 52 you know blog I mean I enjoy writing every week I'm just like okay I don't necessarily have the time for this right now <laughs> yes yeah uh, so so identifying you know just uh, six really meaty topics that you can address over a year mm -hmm. is a far better use of your investment once you have a home page a specific landing page both of those are just driving to Okay, we've got to get people emailed and signed up. And then I, all I want to do is create just one really good piece of content that's over a thousand words, preferably over 2000 words that really digs deep into one of those pains I've discovered in my audience uh, once every other month. Yeah, that's a great idea. I love that. Um, one of my bigger clients, he, the copywriter works on like everything, <laughs> absolutely everything. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been great to work side by side with a copywriter and, you know, see the material come, their approach. Again, the conversions on the landing pages um, since he's been doing them has been fabulous. So um, mm. I highly yeah, recommend that. any entrepreneur get a copywriter. And of course, we'll let everyone know how to find you at the end of this podcast. Oh, delightful. You know, and that's the thing. I love that you said the conversion rates because that's one of those pieces that, especially I think at the small and medium sized business, you can really get taken advantage of by somebody who writes pretty or writes prettier than you, but does not come to you with a, what's your current conversion rate? Let's figure that out. How many people who are even at the very least landing on your site and doing something? So we've yeah. got the whole bounce rate, figuring out are they digging into content? Yeah. What's the ultimate conversion rate for? Yeah, I mean, get somebody who, if they don't ask you those data questions to begin with, run away. Good point. Because that's why you're doing it, right? That's the end goal. It is. It's not just to, it's not just to look cool and have it sound better. <laughs> it's to accomplish exactly. something. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Now, what are, what would you say are a couple of things that people shouldn't do that may be some glaring mistakes that I'm sure you see out there on a landing page or whatever, and then we'll flip that mm. and say a couple of great tips. Um, let's focus on landing pages. Maybe that'd be easier. Yeah. So cardinal sin of landing pages, uh, meaning I'm driving traffic to a specific page to perform a specific action, mm -hmm. whether that's signing up for something or watching a video, the, the cardinal, cardinal, cardinal sin is asking people to do more than one thing. Yes. That your landing page exists for a single purpose and whatever that single purpose is, if it's to call you and I've written landing pages that that's specifically what it's for mm -hmm. is, is to call this number, then there is no email address. There's no yeah, exactly. form. Like no other it's links. Just, 
Yeah. Now, and sometimes you'll see, uh, I've done this before where I have a safety call to action, uh, but it's still driven at that lead generation. And, and, and I fight clients on that. <laughs> You've got one landing page with one action that, that needs to take place on it. And every, everything is pointing at that. Yeah. The second big mistake people make is they, when we said it already, they make it about them instead of yeah. the visitor. So true. Yeah. And so if you've got like a question on your landing page of what makes blank and blank so different, <laughs> nobody cares, right? You think that's a great question because it's like, oh, what's our differentiating factor? Nobody's coming to your page wondering that. What makes this person different? No, it's that self-interest that's driving them. So if you don't have the word you in every single subhead or headline, the word you, where you're talking directly to your audience, yeah. or if it's not implied in the sentence structure itself, something's gone wrong. And that's an, that's an easy way to do it. That's an easy trick. The other, can I give you my pet peeve? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my pet peeve is uh, if you're doing your own, so number one, you got one goal. Number two, you're making every headline and subhead you, the person you're talking to, the subject. Yeah. And then number three, you are going through and removing every single freaking adverb on the page. And I say it that extreme, any L-Y word, quickly. You know, it's going to be fast. It's, it, you know, anything that, um, that smacks of being a superlative that isn't grounded in some sort of number or concrete example immediately after that just be ruthless with that sort of stuff because it's fluff. It makes people not trust you. You think it sounds really cool. And again, your audience just sees right through it. Can you That'd give an one, example? Two, yeah. So I, uh, I had this, I uh, work on a landing page right now. And one of the things the client wanted to do was have this list of like nevers. Um, and so it's for a weight loss. Yeah. I, I've officially entered the underbelly of the internet. <laughs> I've now optimize the weight loss page. Yeah. And so they have a lot of language in there of like, never worry about blank again. Um, never get disorganized. Never this, this, and this. And I know what they're thinking on it is this is really strong language. Yeah. Next to that really strong language was not a picture of the actual thing they were selling, like an actual product picture, but like a picture of somebody holding it. The, this guide, they were holding it and looking really interested and fit and all that kind of stuff. But I said, we, we got to kill that. Get rid of these nevers, make it just a conversational paragraph. Don't overstate it and show me the picture of exactly what I'm going to get. So we ended up having these three actual product images, which are incredibly like unexciting, but it shows the person exactly this is, this is why you don't have to worry about planning out your meals because we're going to give you this page and this page has, you know, plug and play options. And then we're going to give you this page and this page has your, your plan on it. And you're going to get that plan directly from this page, which is going to turn into this grocery shopping list. And it's boom, boom, boom. This is what's going to actually happen. And it's so much more powerful to show somebody that than have those yeah. superlatives of never in they it. You want to understand what they're getting and visualize it. Yeah, they, they do. They want to be able to trust it and know what's coming. Awesome. Love that tip. Um, and I love that you put it in a way that it was your pet peeve because we all have pet peeves in, in our own industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like your honesty there. Now I want to switch gears, um, slightly, um, only because I am being a little selfish here because it, it's my interest. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that, um, like as you know, content marketers or those that love writing blogs or articles, how do we um, be as awesome as you and get into Huffington Post or get our articles on entrepreneur.com or copy blogger? Because I mean, there's so many entrepreneurs that are good writers in that creative sense that want to be known. Mm -hmm. And you've obviously gone through that path successfully. Um, so I would love to tap into your awesomeness and wisdom. And, you know, honestly, I could expand that out to, to not just if you're an awesome writer, but you don't have to be a marketer or a blogger to do this. You, you can straight up be a business owner. And I've applied this method with some clients already where maybe it's not. So as a business owner, the real first question is always, where is the place of authority that if I get their logo on my site, that immediately communicates to my audience, you can trust me, I know what I'm doing, these right. people approve. So for me, that's obviously the kind of places like Business Insider, Entrepreneur, um, the Content Marketing Institutes, the, those sort of places are, yeah. okay, 
this dude can write. So, so that's what I really focused on, but it's different. Right? I just worked with one particular client who's coming out in the fishing and hunting industry. Oh, interesting. And so we just went to two fantastic tools. Uh, number one, Google trends. Google trends is not for, you have, you have to have any SEO expertise at all. <laughs> Google trends will just tell you what right now are the popular search terms in different categories. So there's celebrities and there's, you know, like a fitness category and there's a little politics and that kind of stuff. And just tell you what are the really popular search terms right now. I'll come back to that in just a second. Mm -hmm. The other one is another tool that you can use for free called buzz sumo. Yeah. BuzzSumo lets you drop in the URL for any website and it tells you what's the most popular article on social, which is usually a really solid metric for what's the popular topic or post on their site right now. So we identified uh, about five to 10 different hunting and fishing websites. We plugged them into BuzzSumo and we're looking for holes. So one of these hunting and fishing sites uh, had a great, great article. One of the most popular articles was on fishermen to follow uh, or fisher people uh, to follow on YouTube. And they had nothing for the best pages on Facebook you should be into, uh, the really savvy fishermen who's on Snapchat or Instagram. And I'm <laughs> sure they're on Instagram. No, I'm sure they're on Instagram. And we're like, boom, there's a hole. This article they did on the YouTube stuff was super popular. You put together a article on the top 10 Instagram fisher people to follow. You, you show them that you've shown interest in what's already popular on their site. Right. You're not writing an article about yourself. You're making something that's popular for them. Yeah. You're just depending on the fact that they're going to give you a byline. There's going to be a link to your site in that byline. And then you can take their logo and say, as appeared on or as yeah. featured in. And boom, you're just building it that way. Nice. Yeah. And so that's the, that's the first thing is figuring out what's already popular and just going after that low hanging fruit. Yeah. The second big tip I give to people is write an entire article. So all of these places that I've ended up publishing for started with an entire article I wrote for them specifically and not a pitch. It, it, there's something magical when I go to an editor and I say in a three line email, uh, hey, so and so. Just wrapped up a new article, love to feature, included a few links in it already to Business Insider. Let me know what you think. And then I just attach the article. All right, so it's really, I'm, I'm simplifying it. I learned the hard way that editors could care less about other other places I've written. Like, right. I tried to, I tried to <laughs> crack up and post for like a year. And every time I would write this more and more impressive email about like, oh, now I've written for this and over here. And the thing that finally got me up there was like a two-line email pitch here's the article. Let me know what you think. And that's what finally pushed go. Funny. I'm getting up on Huffington. Yeah. But it's always that full article because it's a gift to that editor to say, you don't need to work. I'm not pitching you on a topic. We don't need to hone this. You might yeah. have to do a little bit of editing for sure, but this thing's ready to go. I just helped you out. Right? And it is, it's really genuinely helpful if the content is good. So find out what's already popular. Uh, focus on those sites that are going to mean the most to you for whatever your niche is and then create that full article and just, I, I cold email. I just what cold email like crazy. a full article? Like how long would that be? Oh, so again, this is great. It depends on the site I'm focusing on. Mm. The first time I did it for entrepreneur, it was about 700 words. Uh, and, and that's because, that's the average length articles. When I did that with Content Marketing Institute, it was above 1,500 words. Wow. Because I know that that's, and I know that's that Content start, Marketing yeah. Institute, they want data and examples True. and how to. Entrepreneur just wants cute little subheads and a couple pieces of advice with like a great quote from somebody inside of it. Yeah. And that's the, and I'm just learning that as I read the You're sites that I already to their like. style and what they like and what's, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, on length and images, especially. On what, sorry? On length, like the oh, word length, count yes. and, and whether or not you should include images. Oh, right. Those are the two. Yeah. And do you have to send them to anyone specifically? I'm assuming on their, I haven't even looked, but I'm assuming on their web pages, they're like, there's a section to go to, like if you'd like to submit. <laughs> yes and no. So the, the smaller a publication is, the more likely they're going to have a page. 
Yeah. So that is sort of my first, yeah, if I decide I want to write for somebody, I do see the Google search for how to submit a guest post, how to submit a guest article on blank. And maybe they'll have that there. For larger sites, they won't. So this is like the really secret stuff. Here's what I do. Uh, yeah, I do two things. Number one, I go to their about page and I look for anybody, because they, they list all the folks that work there, anybody who has something like web or online or editor in their job title. Right. The list. I then go to LinkedIn and I try to find those people on LinkedIn. Not because I'm going to reach out to them, but just because I want to get one more look at, is that actually what they do? Is that their right. job? Is it related to, am I getting to the right person? And then there, there's these free Google spreadsheets, but that's like our, our secret weapon of today, isn't it? Unsexy Sweet. Google spreadsheets. <laughs> and they're called email permeators. And so if all you do is just go Google email permeator, you can grab these free spreadsheets that people have created where you enter the person's first name, the person's last name, and the .com where they work. So it'd be like Aaron Orndorf, iconiccontent.com. And then what these permeators do is they create like 30 to 40 different versions of what the possible email address could be. First initial, last name, at. First initial, period, last name, at. Full first name, last name, at. Right? It just creates this giant list. And that is how I got into entrepreneur. That's how I got into Fast Company. Um, that's partly how I got into Huffington Post. It just, and then I... I reverse engineer the, these email addresses. I send with BBC, so it's not like they can tell that I've just <laughs> totally ripped off their email address <laughs> from some Google spreadsheet. No, I, I just, it's a blind carbon copy to all 40 of those. And I'll tell you, my favorite thing, this is how I got into realtor.org. How I got into realtor.org was uh, I, I did this with the name of their like chief editor, and I got an out-of-office reply. And I was like, boom, that's okay. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> that, that's the formula. All right, let's apply that formula to everybody else. So so like as long as you keep it. In a past life or something? <laughs> oh, no, this is, this is sneaky stuff. That's hilarious. Like, I, I wouldn't have even thought of that. That's hilarious. You cracked me up. But it worked. Yeah. That's like stealth. <laughs> yes. And, and that's where it's, I do a really short email because I don't want to bog them down. Yeah. And uh, whenever I do a follow-up email, if they just, if they ignore me, which is usually what happens, like <laughs> rarely does someone just say no, they just ignore you. Yeah. I just hit them up five days later, not with a follow-up, not with a, Hey, this is a reminder. I know I'm like, they, they've never heard from me before. I just send them the original thing all over again. From scratch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then they'll see it in their inbox. Oh, that looks familiar. Yeah. It look, either looks familiar or at least it doesn't come off as like, I know this person's busy. I'm not going to give them a hard time for not writing me back. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to just act like they never saw it. Perfect. You're a rock star. <laughs> I do my best. I, I like this stuff. This is really, it's fun to share this. I'll tell you. Yeah. So I talked about the Huffington Post thing because I did. I tried to crack them for, gosh, a year and a half of no replies, of no thank yous, that kind of thing. And then finally it was that, you know, two line email that uh, they set me up with the account immediately after that. I shared that story when it first happened about three, six months ago. Yeah. And I got this comment on LinkedIn from somebody who was like, I followed that advice and it worked. And that was like the best thing. That was the best thing I heard all month. Oh, really? I didn't get paid a dime for that. You know, I didn't get paid a dime for that, but it was so awesome to hear somebody say, yeah. man, I was trying that. I was killing myself. I did that kind of thing. And then it worked. Here's the article that's already posted. It was just like nice. candy on my LinkedIn feed. Yeah. You were one persistent and not giving up dude. <laughs> my, uh, my other favorite motto is let's get rejected. I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. You hashtag that thing. I made stickers at a conference. I was at up in Canada. I, mean, I gave that out with a hashtag. Let's get rejected. Cause that's it's awesome. coming. And you're right, persistence. Let's just get rejected. Yeah, oh my gosh. So do you help people? Like, or is it just like a love or passion? Like, but do you actually, for work, help people get on these sites? I'm about to start. What I've finally decided to do is put together my first course. I've never actually sold anything of my own. Yeah. Uh, and because this is the one area where I'm like, I, I can help with this. I, I know 
the, sort of the code. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can really help. Uh, I am. I'm going to launch a, uh, if you go to iconiccontent.com and just plug in guest-posting-course, and I'd love to have you include in the show notes. I've got a coming soon page where people can sign up, and I'll basically roll it out a piece at a time if you sign up before the whole thing's finished, and I'll give it to you all for free, and then as soon as I get it all polished up and pretty, I'll, I'll turn that off and turn on an actual price for it. That's awesome. Cause yeah, you should totally leverage that knowledge. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I've got you, right? So I put up the coming soon up. page, so I will. What's yeah. that? And that's why I put up the coming soon page, because I knew I'd never get to it. You know, my own work it's totally neglected. So I put well, myself wow, something, something public happen. up. But you've talked about it now on podcasts, so now you have to get it up live. <laughs> now, yes. And now the mailing, the email list is growing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you do it. Yeah. Oh, do it. That is awesome. Well, as soon as you get that up and out of my, uh, I think I will be taking part because that is on my bucket list. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll uh, definitely stay connected because I'm all over that. That is awesome. Well, you have been an awesome guest. I've had so much fun. Um, thank you so much for coming on. So just remind our listeners um, how they can find you. Yes, iconic content with one C in the middle. You should probably just look at the show notes to find that out yep. instead of trying to figure it out for yourself. <laughs> uh, that's where I live and breathe. You can find links to all the other stuff I've written at the publishers we talked about, as well as my own more heartfelt blog posts there. And uh, I'd love to see you on Twitter. I am, I'm such a low-hanging fruit on Facebook. You go the extra mile of tracking me down, and there's only one Aaron Orndorff on Facebook, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like a few of my posts. And then, and then shoot me an ask. Like, uh, I'm such a little hanging fruit on Facebook. That is awesome. Um, I, I'm a Twitter lover myself, but I will find, I, I'm sure I've found you already. Um, yeah, thank you so much again for all your wisdom and for being such a fun guest. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. So that is it for today, folks, for this special episode of Sailing to Success podcast. Of course, you can go to lindsayphillips.com to check out this episode, my videos and blogs and all that good stuff. And if, of course, you want to dig into my services on how I can help and support you in your business, go to ssonlinesupport.com. So until next time, folks, I wish you all a productive and profitable week. And may the winds always be at your back. You've been listening to the Sailing to Success podcast, the show created exclusively for entrepreneurs and small business owners looking for a safe port in the storm of fast-paced business growth. To make sure you don't miss a single profit-boosting show, subscribe to this podcast at iTunes and www.sailingtosuccesspodcast.com. To learn more about how Lindsay and her team can help you increase customer service, run your business more effectively, and increase your profits, go to www.ssonlinesupport.com. That's www.ssonlinesupport.com. Now go and implement what you've learned and come back next week for more Sailing to Success podcasts.